Hello and welcome to another car fix video from car fix where I do what I love and I love what I do on uh, today's video I'm gonna be working on this 2005 Chevy Suburban with a four-wheel drive issue now I have the four-wheel drive switches over here and uh, they're supposed to light up with the key on so if I turn the key off they should actually light up like that and it should indicate uh, the position of the the transfer case uh, it should be in too high which is right here this should be illuminated uh, but and none of the lights uh, are coming on so uh, there's an issue going on with the uh, with the four-wheel drive and also I have a message on the dash for service uh, four-wheel drive now the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna have to uh, scan the uh, transfer case control module and see if it has any uh, codes in it and go from there all right, now I got the uh, the scanner hooked up to the vehicle, and I'm, I selected the year, the model, and the engine size, and uh, I need to, to select the system, which is automatic transfer case, which is right here, and we hit OK. Okay, current DTCs. Uh, okay. Uh, the, uh, the the, the four-wheel drive control module has no uh, codes in it, so uh, there's uh, but there's something going on with the four-wheel drive, but uh, uh, the issue is not actually triggering a uh, a code. So uh, let me see if the uh, if the switch is working correctly. So I'm gonna go to this guy and hit all sensors for high, for low. and automatic and we see all right I need to make sure that the switch is working so uh, I'm gonna hit the um, uh, auto four-wheel drive and it should indicate uh, as you can see right there indicates uh, auto four-wheel drive and the uh, the switch return voltage uh, are 4.66 now this is the auto four-wheel drive this is the two high which is uh, 2.02 volts and the 4 high is uh, 3.04 and the 4 low is 1.51 and it uh, seems like the switch is working but the uh, nothing is happening at the at the transfer case so uh, since I don't have any DTCs or any codes I'm gonna have to go there and check all the uh, all the inputs for the uh, for the uh, for the shift uh, motor, uh, you know, bolted to the transfer case, and, and go from there. All right, now uh, uh, this is the the shift motor right here, and this is the transfer case. And I have a skid plate right here, which is covering the uh, the, the transfer case and the shift motor. Uh, but the connector for the shift motor is actually on this side. That's the the front propeller shaft right there. Uh, this is the connector right here for the transfer case motor. Uh, the the power from the from that fuse uh, is actually on this orange wire right there so I'm gonna need I'm gonna have to unplug the the connector and check uh, for power here all right now I have my my tester uh, of course the connector is disconnected and my tester is actually on the orange wire uh, you always back probe the uh, the wire to check for uh, for power or ground or whatever any signals you don't uh, you don't check it from the front because you might damage the uh, the pins inside so you always uh, uh, you know back probe the uh, the connector to check for uh, uh, signals or ground or whatever now uh, I got I got my tester hooked up and it actually shows uh, 13 volts I don't know if you can see it or not the flashes but it has power going to it so uh, we should be okay so nothing uh, the power circuit is fine uh, all the way from the uh, from the fuse all the way down to the uh, the encoder motor or the the shift motor now uh, as you can see the shift the the connector here has uh, almost uh, uh, seven wires going to it now the red wire right here the red wire and the black wire is actually the uh, uh, the power on ground for the uh, for the for the shift motor itself that moves uh, bi-directionally it can move in both ways so uh, should have uh, you know uh, red wire does not mean always power and black wire does not mean mean always uh, uh, ground so uh, the, the red wire can have ground on it and the the black one 
uh, can have uh, power on it. So, uh, so because the shift motor has to move in both directions. Uh, and this, uh, what controls the motor is actually the, uh, the transfer case control module. And also you have a, uh, a brake, uh, uh, a brake circuit for inside the, uh, the transfer case that locks the, uh, the transfer case in place. Uh, uh, the, the orange wire is actually the power feed to it and the, this tan or brown wire right here is the ground. So uh, I, I have to check for, uh, for uh, ground on this wire and also uh, for the encoder motor itself, the encoder sensor itself uh, it has three wires. Uh, it has the, this uh, light green wire, uh, the black and white and the brown and white. Now uh, the, the green wire is actually the uh, the five volt reference going back to uh, coming actually from the control module, uh, and the the black and white is the the low circuit which is basically the ground, and the the last wire which is the uh, the brown and white is the uh, the uh, the signal uh, coming uh, the signal input back to the control module to tell the control module what the, the position of the the transfer case and what speed or what range uh, the transfer case is in. So uh, if I have the five, uh, five volt uh, reference voltage coming from the control module and I have ground uh, on the low circuit, uh, that means the, the encoder motor itself or the shift motor, motor is, is bad and it has to be replaced. So I'm gonna check for the five volt reference and the ground and on those wires. All right, now I got my tester hooked up to the uh, to the uh, five volt uh, five volt input, uh, uh, you know, from the control module to the uh, to the motor, and uh, it should have five volts on it. And uh, my tester my tester shows five point four, which is still okay. So this this circuit is fine. Now for the low circuit, it should have ground on it, which is the black and white, and. And it has ground on it. It's flashing because uh, uh, the uh, uh, the battery charges on the on, on the battery. So now the, the low circuit from the control module is fine uh, because I have ground on it, so it should be fine. Now the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to check the uh, the motor itself, uh, but uh, on the other side of the connector, which is basically uh, the the male side, not the female side. Now uh, the the motor has uh, two circuits, one uh, on the uh, the red wire and the other one on the on the black wire. Now it should have continuity uh, between both of them. It should not be uh, shorted to ground or anything like that. So uh, that's the next thing I'm gonna do. All right, now I have my tester hooked up to the uh, to one side of the uh, uh, the shift motor circuit, which is the black wire, and uh, the tester uh, shows ground, and uh, that's not good. It's not supposed to read anything because uh, the the connector is disconnected, and it should it should read nothing. Uh, now I'm gonna hook it up to the to the red wire and see if uh, if if, uh, if it reads the same. Tester hooked up to the other side of the uh, uh, the shift motor circuit, which is the uh, the red wire right there. And uh, since the the connector is disconnected, this should not read anything. But my tester is actually reading ground. That's not good because uh, the uh, uh, the the connector is disconnected and uh, it shouldn't read anything. But it's reading ground. That means uh, the motor has internal short to the to the case of the transfer case uh, that's why it's reading ground so that mean this means the uh, the transfer case shift motor is bad and it has to be replaced all right now to change the, the shift motor uh, the, the skid plate has to be removed uh, but in my case right here I moved all uh, it has four bolts on it uh, I removed three and I left one uh, this one is loose so basically what I have to do I'm just gonna have to swing it to the front like that and just leave it there now this will actually expose the, uh, the shift motor right here uh, now in order to to clear the shift motor uh, the the front propeller shaft has to be removed uh, now before I disconnect the prop shaft I have to mark it uh, so it can go back in the same position and it's got uh, four bolts uh, two on the bottom and two on the top these are 11 millimeter bolts all right guys now I got the uh, uh, the prop shaft uh, moved forward a little bit uh, and I got the bolt out it's a very long bolt and I have two more one here and one on top and after that I'm just gonna lower down the uh, the shift motor all right now I got all three bolts out and the shift motor is ready to come down Right. 
And this uh, gasket right here, that also has to be replaced. Alright, now we got the sheep motor out right here. All right, guys. Now I got the uh, the encoder motor out of the the vehicle, and uh, uh, this is the the pin that I have to move to the new one. Now the only way uh, to remove this pin without damaging the pin itself or the guide pin itself is actually to cut it to cut the ear of the uh, the encoder motor with a hacksaw, and uh, and uh, to get it out. Uh, as you can see right there, I I cut into it a little bit, but it still be okay. And I had to clean it with a wire brush, so I'm going to install this one on a new one. But before that, let me show you what I meant uh, when I said that the uh, the motor circuit itself is shorter to the case. And this case is actually bolted on the uh, the transfer case, and uh, it was feeding ground uh, through both circuits for the motor itself. Now, the way I'm going to set this up, uh, I have my power probe right here. This is the ground feed uh, for the power probe, and it's hooked up to the case of the encoder motor right here. Now, uh, it should not have any... Uh, continuity or any ground feed uh, on both circuits for the uh, for the for the motor and that will be the the red wire and the black wire that's the black wire right there and that's the red wire but when I put my tester on there but when I pu put my tester there now that's the ground side of the the motor and it's feeding ground so if I disconnect the ground from the case the ground goes away but the ground comes back when I hook up the ground for the from the from the power probe uh, to the motor case itself. Now uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, with the uh, with the red wire. All right, now I got my power probe hooked up to the red wire, and it's ground. And if I remove the ground, no ground. So that means this is bad right there. And also, I found some uh, bad wiring right here. See that wire right there? It's corroded. And this is the ground uh, wire for the uh, for the uh, for the brake uh, for the brake switch for the um, inside the encoder motor. Now uh, I'm gonna test the new one. I got the new one right here. It's the new encoder motor right there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, same test, but on the new motor. Now I did set up my power probe the same thing as the uh, the setup on the old motor, ground to the case and one wire going uh, my uh, my uh, my power probe lead going to the black wire for the for the motor circuit, and I have nothing on it. So that this means it's not shorter. I'm gonna do the same thing with the red wire. Also, the test for the red wire uh, came back okay. And uh, ground wire, red wire, power probe, nothing. So we're okay. Now, before installing this uh, new encoder motor, uh, it came with this alignment tool right here because this is a neutral neutral position for the motor, and it just locks it in place right there. And also, this pin right here goes on this side right there, just like that. Just tap, 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 and it should be fine. All right, now I got the the guide pin in place. Uh, now, as you can see, uh, I marked the position of the uh, the old motor right here. Uh, to match it with the new one. Uh, the new one is in neutral, the old one is not. So I'm, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to uh, use a, a box wrench to actually put the transfer case in, in the neutral position so I can install the, the new uh, encoder motor. All right, guys, uh, I did not have a, a box wrench that fits the, uh, uh, the, uh, the shaft on the transfer case. So what I had to do, I had to actually tear the old one apart right here and get the gear out. So I can actually just put the transfer case in the neutral position, so I can install the new one. Uh, this is going to be another tool. I'm going to add it to my toolbox. Uh, it's a very good tool right there. And also, uh, I brought the the gasket or the isolator right here for the for the motor. It's a brand new. It should always replace. Uh, it should always replace this gasket uh, with the new encoder motor. All right, now uh, this is the, the transfer case uh, shaft right here. That's where the the motor, uh, you know, uh, bolts on. And uh, as you can see right here, there's a notch right there. This notch. Uh, now the the truck, uh, the the car is in actually two two wheel high, so I need to the notch has to be pointing down. That's the neutral position for the the transfer case. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to take this uh, this piece that I took out of the old motor, and install it here. And Twist it down so this will facing down right there. That's neutral position. 
and uh, this way my new uh, uh, encoder motor will fit on uh, nice and uh, uh, without forcing it uh, you know, to, uh, in place. All right, now I got the uh, the new uh, isolator right here or gasket on the the new encoder motor, and uh, and it's ready to be installed. All right, now before I install the bolts, uh, I I had to clean them and put some Loctite on them, you know, for vibration. And uh, the torque specs for this one, I think, is 15 foot pound. Now after I install the uh, the new motor right here, uh, and it's plugged in, uh, the drive shaft back in place right here. Now I'm gonna give it a, a test and see uh, if it works. All right guys, let's give it a test and see if it works or not. Key on. Now let's say it's in too high. Now I'm gonna push four high. Now it's actually switching and I can hear the motor moving. Uh, now I'll we'll try uh, four low. Okay, for four low. The car has to be in neutral. Here we go. That's four low. Four high. And two high. And auto. Alright, everything works. Alright, now I verified everything is working now with the new encoder motor. Uh, you know, an auto, two, four, and four low. Uh, the only thing left is to uh, bolt the, uh, the the front propeller shaft to the front differential and uh, bolt the skid plate back in on the frame. And uh, that's the end of this job. And also that's the end of this video. So if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, any comments, please leave them in the comment section. And also activate the notification bell. So every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. From now until the next CarVix video, thanks for watching and I'll see you then.